This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com, and today I want to talk about injector timing. Basically, when do you want to start injecting fuel? We're going to start with the basic assumptions or goals that we want to minimize the pulse width, make the best use of the fuel we're sending into the motor, maximize RPM, assuming that we're not changing anything else. You would think if the motor is more efficient, the RPM would come up. Minimize the map or the manifold absolute pressure. This is basically what mechanics have been using for years when adjusting mixtures on a motor in a stable idle or some combination of all of these. This is the motor that I will be doing the experiment with. This happens to be a Honda uh, B18C. I'm going to be using it on the low horsepower mode or the small cams, so to speak, the VTEC is turned off. In this motor, it is an ITB. We are having the injection come down just under the throttle plates, about eight inches from the edge of the motor. Uh, we're about 12 inches from the bottom of the air filter down to the intake valve on this motor. So the injection is coming in pretty far up from the intake valves. The way you would normally get to this is under fuel settings, injector timing table, and from there pops up the injector timing table. What you get when you open this table is a table that runs from idle or even below idle up through 7,000 RPM and from a load of 20 up through 100. In my case, I happen to be using a ITB uh, load, but this normally would be manifold air pressure on a speed density system. So let's talk about what this 360 means out in the field. This is the normal engine cycle, which goes through four stages, intake, compression, power, and exhaust, and then repeats back into intake. On our definition, the top dead center between the compression and power stroke or 720 degrees or zero degrees, it's all the same thing, happens just as the piston comes to top dead center right here. In this drawing, I'm showing the crankshaft at about 40 degrees after top dead center on the intake stroke, so the piston is coming down on the compression stroke or about 40 degrees before top dead center, the piston would be coming up in compression zero degrees or top dead center drawn here is 40 degrees in the power stroke as the piston is coming down exhaust would be 320 degrees in the table where the piston is coming up in this picture i'm about 40 degrees before top dead center and the default injector timing this is what the 360 refers to that is 360 degrees of crank rotation since top dead center what we're going to be doing is testing where in this engine cycle is best to optimize the injection. So here's a plot. Basically what I did was I fixed the ignition timing. I also fixed the VE table. So there was running a constant VE all through the test. It swept the injector timing from about 150 up through about 450 degrees. I watched the RPM. Bear in mind that I'm zoomed way in. That's going from 1,000 at the bottom to 1,250 at the top. I did not adjust the throttle position sensor through the test. The manifold air pressure, presumably you'd want to minimize the manifold air pressure. You can see the manifold air pressure coming down as you can see the RPM going up throughout the test. Here is the EGO correction or the exhaust gas correction, the correction that the motor is making to the fueling based on what it's seeing at the O2 sensor. You can see that it's a minimum in this area and increasing fuel as it goes through the test. The pulse width is starting out relatively low and working its way a little higher. And the AFR is pretty constant all the way through the range. Keep in mind that this is from 12 to 15 AFR. So it's a fairly tight, 13 and a half AFR. So now what I did is went to the scatter plots and I plotted 
along the bottom is injector timing from about 100 or 140 up through about 450. On the vertical scale, I'm running the EGO correction from about 8% fuel pull, they're at 92, up through 105. And you can clearly see that the range the motor was running as I was at, say, 170 degrees, was right through this range. As I get to 300, it's adding fuel. As I got up into the 425, 430 degree range, it was really adding fuel. So you would think the optimum place to set your timing would be right here, meaning that is the most efficient the motor could use the fuel. And the EGO correction was pulling about 5 or 6% on average in that area. But then when I plotted the primary injector timing along the bottom, just like before, but I have manifold air pressure, if you'll notice the manifold air pressure went to a minimum at about 330 degrees timing. That's quite a bit different than the number we had before for the EGO correction. You will also notice that the manifold air pressure it varies the least in this area based on the height of where the sampling ended up. Each of these samples was about 10, 15 seconds of idling, but you can clearly see that there is a pattern. Now when I plot RPM for each of these settings, and, and remember that I never touched the throttle position sensor during this entire test, and you can see that the RPM started coming down and then rising, so you'd have to presume the best idle, what the motor was happiest with, 310, 330, and 350, so 350 degree timing. I then opened the same data in histogram view. And basically what you're seeing is the injector timing. Here's where the injector timing was set at 150, 170, 190, and so on and so forth. And manifold air pressure is what's in color. And you can clearly see at about 350 or 370 degrees, I was getting the maximum RPM. So now if we go back to our four engine cycles, or the way it's drawn is five because there's two intakes. The range that I actually tested from was about here up through about 450 degrees. Notice that the least fuel was right about here and the lowest map, manifold air pressure was there and the highest idle was just below the default setting of 360. So depending on what you wanna maximize, I would guess this motor would like to see somewhere in this range, about 340 degrees, just as a way to optimize as many things as possible. This is by no means the end all, everyone should use my settings. This is really just a way to test. I would like to thank my friends at tunerstudio.com the developers of Mega Log Viewer HD, the software I used through this entire process to analyze the data. And be sure to subscribe on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.